Now, many of you have been able to see something like this in the past or use them in a car or a tape deck at home. And the question you're going to ask is, why are you showing me this if this is about photography? Well, we're going to use a tape deck as an analogy about ISO and the impact it's going to have as far as knowing how much noise is created as you start to turn up the ISO number. Now, ISO was created as a standard about film many years ago and digital cameras have used that same standard for the sensitivity on the sensor. One of the things about the sensor is, is that as you start to turn up the gain, which is the same thing as what you had with a tape deck, you end it with more and more noise. And the problem is with that is that will have an impact on the quality of the image that you're going to have coming out of the camera. Now one of the great things is with the modern cameras is that they do have a massive amount of sensitivity range from being very insensitive where you would be using it something like ISO 64 which would be fantastic for a studio situation all the way up to many thousands of uh, ISO numbers where you're into 64,000 in some instances or even higher. Um, these things give you a lot of capability as far as the range of types of shots that you can do without a flash. However, there is a penalty with it. And that penalty is, is noise. There are noise reduction systems in cameras. There are noise reduction systems in post-processing software. But the key is, is that you want to make sure that you're going to use as low a number as possible to minimize two things that you're going to run into. One is, picture noise and the other issue is is that there could be a loss of contrast or color as a result of turning the gain up on the sensor there is going to be a penalty there are no free rides on this one so let's have a look at the examples that i'm going to provide you with uh, the very important thing that you have to keep in mind when you start to turn up the iso is that there is going to be also a consideration about making sure that you have your exposure as close to perfect as you underexpose your shot and try and bring it back, especially if you're using RAW, this is a very applicable to the RAW story, that you're going to end up with more and more picture noise. If you've overexposed your shot, which in many instances is not a bad thing because the cameras can do a lot more with the higher end of the scale as far as that's concerned, and you're bringing it down to a more reasonable exposure, you may avert some picture noise depending on what your ISO is. So let's have a look at those examples and we'll go through those together. With ISO, I wanted to talk about, you know, situations where you want to vary the ISO over a shutter speed. And that is where you've reached the maximum aperture of your camera, uh, where you have no more ability to bring in light other than drop the shutter speed. However, dropping the shutter speed is not going to be of value to you because you're trying to capture a moving subject like a live stage performance. So I call it buying f-stops because I can't buy more lens. Uh, or I have an f4 lens and I really need an f2.8 lens but I didn't go out and spend the difference of a thousand dollars or two for the bigger aperture. So this allows me now to go ahead and offset a situation where either I need more light to come into the camera because I need a faster shutter speed such as a live stage performance I need to be at 1 60th of a second or greater as well as the fact that I could be in a situation where I can't use a flash and I need to be able to shoot in lower light. So there are times where you're going to have to make some creative offsets between 
how much ISO that you're going to use versus going to a slower shutter speed. And there are some significant impacts on that. Uh, as well as you could go to the opposite end of the scale, which is that you don't need to buy f-stops, but what you do is you need to be able to start to slow the shutter speed down and the ISO that you're at won't let you do it. So as an example, you want to be able to get the smooth glass effect of water where you're not seeing the individual part particles of the water, you're actually seeing a glass-like substance, either a stream or a waterfall. And so that comes in handy where you can really get to a, a lower ISO that's going to work for you to get that slow shutter speed. There are other techniques of doing it, but it means you need to buy more kit, which is a thing called a neutral density filter that won't impact the color, but will reduce the amount of light coming into the camera. And that means you've got to have filter systems and so on. So the, the net advantage of buying f-stops is that it gives you the chance to go ahead and make some creative choices without having to buy more kit.